Okay, good afternoon, uh, Denmark, uh, Carlo, and Ray. So just a quick reminder, uh, we'll have problem set number three next week. All right. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, next week. Na. The coverage would be limits and continuity, and the schedule would be uh, November 24th at 8 a.m. So, magiging live siya kay Canvas. And then I'll, I'll do the same thing. Uh, I upload ko dun sa, dun sa module section. All right. So you go to Canvas, click the modules page. Dung ko i uh, upload yung PDF copy ng uh, problem set three. So nandun lahat ng problems sama sama sila in uh, in that PDF file. So again, it can it will uh, be live on Canvas November 24th, 8 a.m. Punta kay sa module section. And then the submission will be item by item. So the deadline for the submission of all the items would be on November 29th, 11.59 p.m. So I'm thinking of uh, tweaking the, the system a little bit. So what we'll have is uh, there is a mandatory problem. So we get only one problems. Yung isa sa kanila ay required na sagutan. And then you will need to choose uh, two more from the remaining four. Pero magugroup sila sa dalawa. So group A, pipili kayo ng isa dun sa dalawang tanong sa group A. Tapos merong group B, pipili kayo ng isa dun sa dalawang tanong sa group B. So uh, ganun pa rin, tatlong items lang yung sasagutan nyo, but you have five options. Kaya lang, na group na into two subclasses yung mga options. So group A, isa yung sasagutan. Group B, uh, iba yung sas uh, pipili kayo ng isang sasagutan. Hindi pwedeng parehas na group A or parehas na group B yung sasagutan nyo. But anyway, I'll put the, the detailed instructions in the problem set itself. So watch for, watch out for it. So today we'll try to uh, finish, hopefully, uh, the concept of uh, our discussion about uh, continuity. All right. So last time we talked about uh, continuity on compact sets because we wondered, uh, ano yung mga klase ng mga sets na na preserve by a continuous map or a continuous function? Sabi natin, kapag ka meron kang open set, yung image ng open set na yon under a continuous function is not necessarily uh, open. And then if you have a closed set, kinuha mo yung image ng closed set na yon under the continuous function f, the result need not be closed. So the question is, ano yung uh, property ng sets na napreserve ng isang continuous function? And the answer there is in uh, theorem 3.6, which we proved last time. So, na preserve yung pagiging compact. So, if you have a function defined on some uh, compact subset of the domain, then the image under the continuous function of that compact set is also compact. So, yun yung nakita natin last time. Now, another thing about uh, being uh, or being defined on a compact set, yung mga continuous functions na aattain nila yung maximum o kaya yung minimum sa isang point sa domain provided that it is continuous on a compact set. So this is a, a more general um, statement of the extreme value theorem that you have seen in MAT36. Ang sabi sa MAT36, kapag ka meron kang function um, na continuous at differentiable, so pwede mo na lang i-assume na differentiable siya, then uh, it is differentiable on the closed interval, then magkakaroon ka ng isang element dun sa domain, uh, dun sa closed interval na yon na magbibigay sa'yo ng absolute maximum at isang element dun sa closed interval na yon na magbibigay sa'yo ng absolute minimum on that interval. Now, let's try to generalize that. And the general statement is given in theorem 3.7. It says here that if we have a function f defined on any subset E of R towards the set of real numbers, plus we assume that f is continuous, sa isang compact subset ni E, all right? Hindi requirement na si, uh, si F ay di, uh, and si E ay compact. So pwede kang kumuha ng isa lamang compact subset ni, uh, ni E. Sabihin natin siya si K, all right? Now, sa MAT36, si K dapat ay interval or closed interval siya dapat. Pero sa MAT155, we have generalized this notion to admit generalizations ng mga compact sets. Alam natin, example ng compact set ay yung mga closed and bounded. All right? Pero in general, yung mga compact sets ay um, actually sila yung mga closed and bounded, hindi lang sila yung mga closed intervals. All right? So if we have a continuous function defined in a compact subset of its domain, 
then the function f is guaranteed to attain its maximum and minimum values on k. So ibig sabihin, meron ka mahanap na element x sub m at saka x sub capital M, actually dagdagan natin to, of k such that f of x sub m is the absolute minimum and f of x sub capital M is the absolute maximum for all x in the compact set k. All right? So sinasabi dito si xm at saka si x capital M ay mga elements ng compact set. So in essence, sinasabi niya yung maximum at minimum ng function value ng isang continuous function sa isang compact set ay na-attain niya sa mga elements so, o sa ilang elements ng compact set na yun. Okay? Now, if we will prove it, it will be a very big help if we will first, uh, if we'll just uh, assume that this lemma is true. Hindi pala i-assume. Uh, supposedly, kailangan niya ng proof, pero yung proof ng lemma is left as an exercise. Okay? Ano yung sinasabi ng lemma 3.1? It says here that uh, if K is compact, then the supremum of K and the infimum of K both exists at hindi, uh, at hindi lamang sila nag-exist, dapat si A, yung supremum at infimum na yon ay na kay K din. Okay? So try to prove it by just recalling what the definitions of the supremum, the infimum, and a compact set are. So after nun, siguro madali lang yung proof ng theorem 3.1. But what we want to focus here is on the proof of the um, extreme value theorem. Okay? Prove natin siya. So ang assumptions, si K ay compact subset ng domain, tapos uh, si F ay continuous, gusto nating ipakita na na-attain ni F yung maximum at minimum niya sa ilang elements ng compact set. Alright? So let's try to write the proof here. Alright. So by theorem, uh, so siguro sabihin ko, since K is compact, then by theorem, uh, which is uh, the theorem that uh, says na na-preserve yung pagiging compact, hindi nyo kailangan i-quote pag nagagawa na kayo ng problem set. It would be good if you can quote uh, the theorem number, but it's fine if you don't. All right? So by theorem 3.6, alam natin na yung image ng isang compact set is also compact. All right? It's also compact. Kasi nga si F ay continuous. All right? Then anong ibig sabihin ng pagiging compact niya? Or ano yung consequence ng pagiging compact niya? Doon ko gagamitin yung lemma 3.1. So by lemma 3.1, the infimum of uh, f of k ay equals sa uh, c sub little m and the supremum of f of uh, capital K. All right? So yung supremum ng mga function values ng mga elements ni K, sabihin natin siya ay si C sub M, are members of F of K. Alright? Ayun yung sinasabi ng lemma 3.1. Yung supremum at infimum ng isang compact set ay nasa loob ng compact set na yon. So si K ay compact, dun sa preservation theorem ng compactness, compact din yung F bracket K. Dahil compact si F bracket K, I can invoke lemma 3.1. Meron siyang infimum, tawagin natin Z little m. Meron siyang supremum, Z sub capital M. At pareha sila ay members ng F bracket K. Dahil sila ay members ng F bracket K, ibig sabihin image sila ng mga elements ni capital K. So thus, there exists X sub little m and X sub capital M, coming from K such that si C sub M okay, ay equal sa F of X sub M, right? Pero alam natin si C sub little M ay infimum ng mga function values ng mga elements ni K. So, ibig sabihin, in the first place, C sub M being equal to the function value of some element of capital K is a lower bound for F bracket K. So it would be less than or equal to all members 
of f bracket k. Elements sila ni f bracket k kung si x dito ay element ni capital K. All right? And then we also say that uh, si c sub capital M ay supremum ng f bracket k. So in essence, c sub m is an upper bound of f bracket k. Si f of x, as long as si x ay naka capital K, ay element ng f bracket k. All right? So ibig sabihin, upper bound niya si C sub capital M. Pero si C sub capital M ay F of X sub capital M. And actually, we have proven this. We have proven the result already kasi napakita natin na si uh, yung maximum ay yung absolute minimum. Yung pinakamaliit among the members of F bracket K ay image ng isang element ni K. So si C sub M yon. At sure tayo, si um, C sub M ay image ng isang element X sub little m ni capital K. And in the same uh, token, si C sub M, which is the absolute maximum, kasi mas malaki siya sa lahat ng element ni X, ay isang image ng isang element ni capital K under the continuous function F. Right? And so that completes the proof that if you have a compact set uh, and a continuous function on that compact set, then that uh, function attains the maximum and minimum at some members of the compact set K, right? So I think this is uh, probably the biggest uh, consequence ng pagiging uh, continuous sa isang compact set, yung extreme value theorem, which is extremely helpful for um, for other branches of mathematics. So for Dun sa mga sudyante ko sa Math 174, nakita na natin itong consequence ng, uh, ng extreme value theorem when we look at uh, composite uh, numerical integration schemes. Gumamit ako ron ng extreme value theorem. Okay? And I guess that ends uh, section 3.4. Do you guys have any questions? Okay. Kung wala naman, punta tayo sa 3.5. So, ginawa natin so far ay parang um, generalize natin yung konsepto ng pagiging, ah, ng pagkakaroon ng limit ng isang sequence. Tapos itinali natin yon papunta sa limit ng isang function. The next question is, ano kaya yung posibleng extension ng Cauchy sequences sa, sa mga functions? All right? Kung ang limit ng isang function ay naidikit natin sa pagiging uh, as limit ng isang sequence, idikit natin sa konsepto ng limit ng isang function. Yung continuity ng isang function ay naidikit natin sa pagiging uh, sa isang sequential criterion. Ano naman kaya yung pwede nating tingnan as the analog of uh, Cauchy sequences in the realm of functions? Okay? Yung titingnan natin ngayon, Ano yung pwede nating gawing parang counterpart ng Cauchy sequences sa mga functions? And actually, the answer could be argued to be uniform continuity. Okay? And to illustrate the thing, so ang uniform continuity ay isa lang ding klase ng continuity, pero mas stricto, mas restrictive yung pagiging uniform continuity. You can think of it as continuity plus another thing. Okay? So balikan natin yung ilang mga simple function, right? So, limbawa yung linear function f of x equals x. Uh, pag prove na siya ay continuous, so, bibigyan tayo ng epsilon, humanap tayo ng delta. And that delta might depend on epsilon. Alright? Now, here, sa proof ng continuity ng f of x at a number x sub 0, we can choose delta to be equal to epsilon. Okay? And it doesn't matter what that x sub 0 is that we are considering. So kung i-check mo yung continuity ng isang function uh, ng, ng, uh, at least itong linear function na to, sa mga real numbers, sa kahit anong real numbers sa kanyang domain, pwede mo laging piliin yung epsilon na given to be your response delta. So it doesn't matter what x sub 0 is, kung i-check mo yung continuity niya sa 1, ite-take mo pa rin delta si epsilon. Kung ite-take mo na uh, kung i-check mo kung continuous siya sa one half, i-take mo pa rin na delta ay yung given epsilon or, or anything smaller than the given epsilon. 
So yun yung nangyari, hindi namimili yung choice natin ng delta ng x sub 0. This choice of delta will hold for any choice of x sub 0. And true enough, when you have written the proof, from here, you can show that regardless of what x sub 0 is, we'll be able to show that if delta is chosen to be less than or equal to epsilon, then we can come up with this inequality. All right. And again, it doesn't depend on the choice of x sub 0 or the number x sub 0 to which we are testing the continuity of the function at. All right. This is a little bit in contrast kapag ka na kay x squared na tayo. All right. Alam natin, si x squared being a polynomial, it is continuous at every point in its domain. Okay? Kaya lang, kung magiging uh, meticuloso tayo sa pagpuprove ng continuity niya, pag binigyan tayo ng epsilon greater than zero, ang isang posibleng choice ng delta ay ito. Delta is the minimum between one and uh, epsilon over twice the magnitude of x sub zero plus one. Okay? Now, this is still a constant. Yun nga lang sa bawat x sub 0, ito yung candidate natin kay delta. All right? Actually, it doesn't matter if you, if you choose any other constant here. Sabi ko dati, yung initial choice of delta, okay, or bound for delta, ay pwedeng constant. Hindi necessarily 1, pwedeng 2, pwedeng 4, pwedeng 1 half, pwedeng 100, pwedeng 17. Pero yung makukuha mong second uh, constant na magiging uh, kalaban neto sa, sa pagiging minimum o pagiging choice for delta ay lagi magdedepende sa x sub 0. Alright? So, ibig sabihin, kung halimbawa, itetest mo yung continuity ni x squared, halimbawa kay, uh, kay 1, so yung delta mo ay minimum between 1 and epsilon over 3. Alright? Kung itetest mo si x sub 0, uh, yung continuity kay halimbawa kay 0, si delta natin, pipili natin to be the minimum between 1 and what? 1 and epsilon. Alright? And so on. So, ibig sabihin, pag naiba na yung x sub 0, dapat iba yung ibibigay nyo sa akin na delta kasi dito yung choice natin kay delta ay nakadepende dun sa x sub 0 na gusto kong i-check kung continuous ba yung function dito or hindi. There's no way on how to get a delta without involving x sub 0 para kay x squared. Alright? So parang mas madaling mag-prove ng continuity ni, uh, ni x kasi sa kahit anong delta or sa kahit anong epsilon, piliin ko lang si delta na any number less than or equal to epsilon. Pero kay x squared, hindi na pwede yun. Kasi kay x squared, nakadepende kay x sub 0 yung pipiliin nating delta. Okay? Now, both are continuous, but number 1, the first function, has a nice property. Na yung choice of delta is uniform along all x sub zeros in its domain. Kahit anong x sub 0 nag-work, may makukuha tayong constant delta that might depend on epsilon, but doesn't depend on x sub 0. So sabi natin, ito ay stronger or more restrictive form of continuity. Ang tawag natin sa kanya ay uniform continuity. And you, know, you can remember it by looking at the term uniform. Yung choice mo ng delta ay uniform sa kahit na anong x sub 0. In contrast to the quadratic function x squared, it is still continuous but since the choice of delta is not uniform for all x sub zeros, ibang x sub zero, iba yung, pos, uh, yung choice for delta, then this is not continuous. Uh, this is not uniformly continuous. All right? Now, yun yung concept ng uniform continuity. All right? Dapat uniform yung delta na gagamitin natin sa bawat uh, x sub zero. So let's look at the formal definition of uniform continuity. Right? So function f defined on a subset E of R towards the set of uh, real numbers is uniformly continuous on the set E if and only if for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero. That sounds very familiar. But now we have this parenthetical remark that delta must only depend possibly in epsilon not on x sub 0 okay because we want the inequality the following inequality to be true 
dapat sa kahit anong xy element of epsilon, yung delta natin na PPLM, hindi na siya pwedeng nakadepende kay x sub 0, dapat mag-work siya sa lahat ng elements ni capital E, all right? Dapat kapag ka yung x and y are very close to each other, they are within delta uh, distance from each other, then it should follow that their function values are less than epsilon. So kaya naisip ko kanina, oh, para pa lang ito ay extension ng pagiging Cauchy. Sabi natin sa pagiging Cauchy, kapag ka yung subscript ng x sub n at saka x sub m ay palapit ng palapit sa isa't isa, Okay, or palaki sila ng palaki pero yung value nila ay palapit ng palapit sa isa't isa. Then yung mga, um, yeah, sorry, kapag yung subscript N and M nila ay palapit na ng palapit sa isa't isa, dapat silang dalawa ay malapit na malapit na sa isa't isa. Right? So yung pagiging kushi, nagdidikit-dikit sila palapit dun sa limit. Alright? Ganun din yung uniform continuity habang si X at saka si Y ay palapit ng palapit sa isa't isa. Dapat yung function values nila palapit din ng palapit sa isa't isa. Alright? And that's the beauty of uniform continuity kasi nga, hindi mo kailangan na mag-work yung delta sa isang specific x sub zero. Ang usapan dito, magkalapit ba si x at saka si y na nasa domain? Pag magkalapit sila, dapat yung function values nila ay magkalapit na magkalapit din sa isa't isa. Alright? And now you see x sub 0 is nowhere to be found here kasi yung uniform continuity is defined for a set. Dapat uniform continuity siya sa isang set. There's no notion of uniform continuity at a number. Kasi nga pag uniform continuity, dapat yung choice ng delta ay uniform sa lahat ng members ng set na yun. Okay? And I guess we have stressed... Uh, a lot of times earlier in my uh, in my monologue na yung 3.7 ay totoo. Kapag ka siya uniform continu continuous, then continuous yung function. Pero kapag ka continuous yung function, hindi necessarily uniform continuous siya. Kasi yung continuity is another form, parang nag-level up na siya na form ng continuity. Okay? Now, let's have uh, theorem 3.8. Uh, which will tie up the concept of uniform continuity with limit of sequences. All right, lagi natin binabalikan yung limit ng mga sequences. So what does theorem 3.8 uh, says? So here we are um, considering a function f defined on a set E towards the set of real numbers. And actually this theorem is giving us a necessary and sufficient condition in other words, it's giving us a, con uh, a characterization of uniformly continuous functions. So f is uniformly continuous if and only if for any two sequences, xn and yn, inside the domain with the limit of x sub n minus y sub n being equal to zero, then it must follow that the limit of the sequence of differences of uh, function values must also be equal to zero. Okay? So, hindi na natin kailangan palang dumaan sa definition ng uniform continuity para ma-check yung uniform continuity. Kailangan lang pala or it is sufficient to show na pag kumuha ko ng kahit anong dalawang generic sequences sa loob ni E such that the limit of the sequence formed by the difference of the terms of that of those two sequences dapat nagko-converge kay zero Okay, then pag in-imply niya na yung limit ng f of xn minus f of yn ay zero then, then automatically uniformly conti uh, uniform continuity will follow. Okay, so let's try to prove it. Okay, let's start with a forward, uh, forward step. So here we will assume that... Uh, F is uniformly continuous. So, gamitin ko na lang yung UC para sa uniform continuous. Okay? And then, um, I will, uh, uh, I want to show that this conditional statement is true. Right? Yun yung goal ko ngayon sa forward proof. Now, ito ay conditional proof. So, pwede kong i-assume yung antecedent, ipakita ko na magpa-follow yung consequent. Alright? 
So here I will say that um, I will consider two generic sequences inside the domain such that x sub n minus y sub n converges to zero. Okay, and we want to show that the limit of uh, f of x n minus f of y n as n approaches infinity is equal to zero. Then, okay. Now the idea here is, uh, okay, kamitin ko yung definition ng uniform continuity, right? So then given an epsilon greater than zero, we are guaranteed to find a delta independent of uh, x sub zero, right? It doesn't, uh, it doesn't depend on the element of the domain being considered, okay? So such that, Whenever x minus y is less than delta, then abs uh, absolute value of f of x minus f of y is less than epsilon. All right. This is nothing more but the uh, definition of uniform continuity. Okay. Tapos ngayon gagamitin ko yung fact na yung x uh, n minus y n ay nagko converge kay zero. All right. So using the same delta as here, so with this delta, or for this delta, we can find a capital N in N, a natural number big N, such that for all N and M, or uh, I'll just say for all N, greater than or equal to capital N, then we know that x minus y or x sub n minus y sub n is less than delta. Okay. At ito ay galing dun sa, okay. This is from the fact that x n minus y n converges to zero. All right. Remember, definition and continuity uh, ng limit ng isang sequence. All right. For any epsilon that you can find. Specifically, I am using the delta that I found from the definition of uh, uniform continuity. Para sa delta na to na greater than zero, may makikita akong lower limit dun sa subscript ng mga elements ng sequence such that after that threshold capital N, yung xn minus yn minus the supposed limit, siguro it might be better to include the supposed limit here, is less than delta. Okay? Dun sa definition yun ng uh, definition yun ng limit ng sequence, epsilon yung magkikita nyo dyan. Pero pinili ko yung epsilon specifically to be the delta okay, that we have chosen earlier. And you will see in a second, bucket yun yung pinili ko na delta. Okay? Again, this is guaranteed because we know that xn minus yn converges to zero. Right? And what do we have here? We have absolute value of xn minus yn you can drop the minus zero. Okay, pwede ko na yan tanggalin. Nilagay ko lang siya para mas makita niyo yung uh, paggamit ng limit definition. All right. Now, xn minus yn has an absolute value less than delta. Kaya lang, dun sa pagiging uniformly continuous ni f, kapag ka daw yung x minus y ay may absolute value na less than delta, yung function values nila magiging less than kay epsilon. So therefore, it automatically follows here na yung function value ni xn minus yung function value ni yn ay less than epsilon by this implication over here. Pag less than delta, yung function value naman magiging less than epsilon. And that's what we used here. But let's uh, take a look back. Ano yung meron tayo? Given an epsilon greater than zero. Okay. We, we know that uh, there exists a capital N in N such that for all little n greater than or equal to capital N, the absolute value of f of x n minus f of y n is less than epsilon. So this highlighted phrases actually is the very definition of pagiging convergent ng sequence f of x n minus f of y n. So therefore, I can say here, that f of xn minus f of yn converges 
to zero. And we have proven the first half of the statement. Okay. Any uh, questions, Don? May malabo bang parte? Okay. So <clears throat> there are none. Let me just shrink this a little bit para kumasya yung converse, yung proof ng converse. Okay, let's prove the converse. Para dun naman sa converse, i-assume natin yung pangalawang statement. Okay? So we will assume that for all sequences xn and yn inside the, the domain, if the absolute, uh, if xn minus yn converges to zero, okay, or the sequence of absolute values converge to zero, kailangan ba absolute values? Ah, hindi naman pala absolute values yung kailangan. Okay. Kailangan lang mag, kapag ka nagko-converge si xn minus yn kay zero, then automatically dapat na nagko-converge yung f of xn minus f of yn Okay, zero. So ito yung assumption natin ngayon. Pag nakakita ka ng dalawang sequences kay E, na yung difference ng mga terms nila ay nagko-converge kay zero, then automatically daw magpa-follow na yung sequence of function values or the sequence of differences of function values will also converge to zero. So we want to show that if this is true, then F is uniformly continuous. Okay? And then the proof here is via contradiction. So let's prove it by con <clears throat> contradiction. Excuse me, guys. Okay. So, ano yung, uh, ano yung supposition natin dito? We suppose for the sake of contradiction that F is not uniformly continuous. Kung si F ay hindi uniformly continuous, we should be able to see a contradiction. Okay? Now, if F is not continuous, then there should exist an epsilon greater than zero such that for all delta greater than zero, okay, we have this. Uh, for all delta greater than zero and uh, X and Y being in E, we have absolute value of x minus y less than delta implies f of x minus f of y is greater than or equal to epsilon. Okay? Negation ng definition ng uniform continuity. May makikita tayong epsilon na sa kahit anong delta na piliin natin at sa kahit anong pair ng elements ni E, yung pagiging malapit ni x at saka ni y or they being uh, within delta distance from each other, will imply that their function values are um, great, are, are farther than epsilon distances from each other. So, mas malaking distansya ni f of x mula kay f of y against delta, uh, against epsilon. Okay? Now, this statement is true for all uh, delta greater than, uh, greater than zero. Now, I can specifically choose delta, okay? Imbes na sabihin ko lang arbitrary uh, greater than zero siya. So, pwede kong i-assume yan specifically to be 1 over n. Okay? And then, kapag ka nakakita ko ng x sub n at saka y sub n na na kay e, so in effect, I am getting a um, I am getting a sequence or actually two sequences, sequence sa mga x sub n's, sequence sa mga y sub n's, such that x sub n minus y sub n is less than delta. Then it will follow that f of x sub n minus f of y n will have absolute value greater than or equal to epsilon. Okay, yan daw yung mangyayari. All right. So again, instead of considering arbitrary delta, sabihin ko, okay, dahil nag-work naman siya sa lahat ng delta na positive, bakit hindi ko tingnan yung mga delta na equal kay 1 over n? At kung yung mga sa bawat isang n, or sa bawat isang little n, pwede kong tumingin ng mga x sub n, 
such that at sa at sa mga y sub n na yung distance nila mula mula sa isa at isa ay less than 1 over n okay so it's just like universal specification okay so dapat daw totoo ito for some epsilon okay now let's look at uh, this statement so Since we know that this guy is true for all n, right? Then x sub n minus y sub n must converge to zero. Uh, do you guys remember what's the reason for this? Why can I conclude that since this uh, continued inequality is true, bakit alam ko na si x n minus y n ay magko-converge kagat kay zero? Any idea? Anjan pa ba kayo? <laughs> Medyo 37 minutes na yung monologue ko. So, any idea bakit yung x and minus y and alam ko magko-converge kay zero? Alam ko yung iba nahihiya lang sa magot. Sabi nyo sa, sa, sa mga homeworks, nahihiya lang kayo sa magot. But hopefully, tanggalin nyo yung hiya. Alright? So, the reason here is the squeeze theorem. Okay, by the squeeze theorem. By the squeeze theorem. Bakit squeeze theorem? Meron akong inequality na totoo sa lahat ng n. Yung limit ng sequence na puro zeros ay zero. Yung limit ng sequence ng mga one over n's, siya ay zero din. So, yung limit ng absolute value sequence ay equal kay zero. At dahil ang, ang, ang limit nito ay zero, automatically pag tinanggal ko yung absolute value niya, magko-converge pa rin yun kay zero. Okay? However, uh, so what do we have here? We have found two sequences, x sub n and y sub n, whose difference converges to zero. So na-satisfy ito. So dapat magpo-follow na si f of x n minus f of y n must converge to zero as well. Okay? So, dahil magko-converge siya kay zero, so dapat yung limit, or actually dapat, sa kahit anong epsilon greater than zero, including the epsilon that we have here, all right, dapat yung absolute value ng f of xn minus f of yn must be less than epsilon. So, this will imply that f of xn minus f of yn are within epsilon distance from each other. Kasi consequence yun ng pagiging, uh, pagiging, uh, pagiging limit ng, uh, ng sequence ay zero. Right? So dapat yung sequence minus the limit, so may minus zero dun sa loob, ay dapat may absolute value na less than epsilon. Kaya lang, this result that we have uh, gotten here is actually a contradiction. It contradicts the fact that we already knew that f of x n minus uh, f of y n must be greater than or equal to epsilon by assumption or by our supposition that f is not uniformly continuous. So if we will accept the fact that f is not uniformly continuous, then we must be ready to admit that this guy is greater than or equal to epsilon, and yet at the same time, the same guy is less than epsilon. And hence, that's a contradiction. Okay, So we must not accept that f is not uniformly continuous. So that means by the law of excluded middle, f must be uniformly continuous. Okay. So what we have proven here is a characterization of uniform continuity. However, this is not very useful whenever we want to prove that a certain sequence is uh, uniformly continuous. Because in order to use this, kailangan i-consider natin lahat ng posibleng sequences kay E na yung limit ng xn minus yn ay equal kay zero. Tapos ipapakita natin dapat yung limit ng difference ng mga functions, function values ay equal rin kay zero. And that's difficult to do because we must consider all sequences satisfying the box condition. So, mas okay to kung gagamitin natin siya sa criterion for the, neg for, the negative, um, for the negative answer. 
and that's what corollary 3.8 tells us, right? This corollary tells us that, oops, yeah, mm -hmm. okay, yeah. So that's in corollary 3.5. It says here that the function is not uniformly continuous. Oops, yeah, uh, come on, sorry guys. My notability is uh, acting strange today. But the sequential criterion for non-uniform continuity says that the function will not be uniformly continuous if we can find two sequences, all right, whose difference converges to zero, but the difference of function va values do not converge to zero. Okay, kapag kayo mga differences ay hindi nag, ng function values ay hindi nag approach kay zero, then we are sure that that function is not uniformly continuous. Okay. Uh, example 3.8 is just a restatement nung nasa introduction kanina na si f of x ay continu uh, uniformly continuous by basically demonstrating that the choice of epsilon doesn't depend on the uh, the the choice of uh, x sub zero, so that's good. Now the illustration of corollary three point five is example nine. Okay, so paano mapakita na yung sine in one over x ay continuous pero hindi uniformly continuous. Okay, now uh, we will leave as exercise yung pagpapakita na indeed h is continuous. Uh, I think you can use the um, uh, you can use the definition, or actually, madali lang pala kasi pwedeng sabihin yun na si 1 over x ay continuous uh, open interval 0, 1. Kasi ang mga rational functions ay continuous sa kanilang domain. I think we have uh, a remark to this ex uh, to that extent, so hindi nyo na kailangan siyang i-prove. And then si sine, napakita ba natin na continuous si sine? Yung pala yung magiging problema. Hindi pa yata natin approve na si sine ay continuous. Pero assuming kaya nyo i-prove na si sine of x ay continuous, then you can just say that sine of 1 over x is just the composition of uh, sine x and 1 over x. Both functions are continuous, then the, the composition will also be continuous. So that's basically your uh, argument for the first sentence. And now that would complete the proof that it is continuous. Pero paano natin siya mapapakita na hindi siya continuous? Then by the by the uh, criterion for non-uniform continuity, kailangan makahanap tayo ng dalawang sequences. So in this case, ang pipilin kong unang sequence ay ito, pangalawang sequence ay ito. All right? And then if uh, we check that xn minus yn will converge to zero. Okay? So mangyari lang naman dito ay ano? So, ang xn minus yn ay equal kay 1 over pi over 2 plus 2n pi minus 1 over 3 pi over 2 plus 2n pi, okay? And then when n becomes very, very large, this guy will go to 0 kasi the denominator will blow up. This guy will also go to 0 because the denominator will also be large because we have... Uh, a term 2 and pi in the denominator. So these sequences are both convergent and they converge to zero. So ibig sabihin yung sum nila or yung difference nila magko-converge is a zero minus zero, which is zero. Okay? So the premise of, uh, so possibling candidates si xn at saka si yn dun sa, dun sa, dun sa criterion at corollary 3.5. So, ngayon, gusto ko ipakita na si f x n minus f of y n ay hindi nagko-converge kay zero. Okay? So, let's look at f of x n. Oops, ano yan yari? Come on. Okay, there you go. Minus f of y n equal to kay sine ng 1 over pi over 2 plus 2 n pi minus sine ng 1 over 3 pi over 2 plus 2 n pi, all right? So this would be sine ng pi over 2 plus 2 n pi 
minus sine and 3 pi over 2 plus 2 n pi. Okay. But this is basically sine and pi over 2 plus, oh, sorry, minus sine and 3 pi over 2, right? Kasi wala namang effect yung additional na 2 n pi kasi yan yung period ng, uh, ng sine at saka cosine. And this will be just 1 minus negative 1, which is equal to 2. So the sequence of, uh, of differences of function values actually is a constant sequence. Constant sequence yan na 2. So therefore, we can say that f of the sequence f of xn minus f of yn converges to 2, which is not 0. So we have found here two sequences whose difference converge to zero or converges to zero, but the sequence form by their function values ay hindi nagko-converge kay zero, okay? Nagko-converge siya kay two. So we can say that sine of one over x is not uniformly continuous, okay? Continuous siya kasi composition siya ng dalawang continuous functions on the uh, open interval zero to infinity, pero hindi siya uniformly continuous. Okay? So, ang labanan dito ay pagalingan ng pagpili ng sequence xn at saka yn. So, kailangan yung mag-construct pumili. Ito yung karamniwan nangyayari sa analysis, kaya I always think na analysis is much harder than algebra or modern algebra. Kasi sa analysis, kailangan or madalas kailangan magaling kang mag-construct ng specific examples na papasok sa proof mo o papasok as a counterexample. Kailangan mong bumuo ng mga functions. Kaya kung mapapansin nyo sa problem sets, lagi ako may problem na give an example of the following para masanay kayong mag-isip or mag-construct ng mga objects, mga sets, mga functions that satisfy certain properties. Because that's a very big boost kung magme-major kayo sa real analysis. Compared sa algebra, sa algebra medyo nadadalian ako kasi pag alam mo yung definition, alam mo yung mga previous theorems, carefully apply mo lang sila step by step, more or less you will get near to what you want to prove. But in analysis, sometimes you will need to construct something in order to prove whatever you were asked to, to prove. Okay? Tapos yung mga estilo ng mga theorems sa nakikita natin dito, ang mga criterions, laging existence. Pag may nakita kang sequence na ganito, tapos ganito yung conclusion, hindi siya ganito. So parang ganun yung nangyayari. Kaya dapat magaling tayong mag-construct ng mga sets, mga sequences, or mga functions. Okay? Now, this is uh, another Another nice thing about compactness, sabi natin kapag kakinuha mo yung image ng isang compact set, ang makukuha mo ay compact pa rin. Okay. In turn, meron palang magandang, uh, magandang consequence yung pagiging compact. Kapag ka si F ay continuous sa isang compact set, automatic siya ay uniformly continuous. Okay. So kapag ka meron kang continuous function sa isang compact set, sure ka na yung function na yon ay uniformly continuous sa compact set na yon. Right? So kapag ka pala binigyan ko kayo ng compact set, tapos sabi ko, prove that uh, this uh, function is, uh, con is uniformly continuous on the given compact set. All right? uh, sorry, hindi, hindi, pa, hindi ko pala ganun kadali ibibigay yung tanong. No? Ano ba yung tanong? Consider the function f defined on a set E. Bibigay ko kung ano yung itsura ni E show that f is uniformly continuous on the set E. Pwede yung tingnan nyo muna or isipin nyo muna kung si E ba ay compact. Kasi kapag ka-compact si E, it suffices na ipakita na si f ay continuous kay E. Kasi kapag ka-continuous siya kay E at saka si E ay compact, then si f automatically ay uniformly continuous by theorem 3.9. So you need you need not go through the definition of pagiging um, uniformly continuous kasi doon gagamitin mo pa yung konsepto ng compactness pero yun pala sufficient na na siya ay maging continuous sa isang compact set para maging continuous sa compact set na yun. Okay? And let's briefly read the proof uh, provided in the work text or in the lecture notes. 
Sabi rito, ipoprove natin siya by contradiction. Okay, fine. So we will suppose that F is not um, uniformly continuous. So assumption kasi si F ay continuous. So kukopin ko lang si F ay continuous. Pero ang i-assume natin for the sake of contradiction is that F is not uniformly continuous on K. So we want to find a contradiction somewhere. Pero hopefully medyo fresh pa si corollary 3.5 na sinasabi na... Um, uh, na nagbibigay sa atin ng isang criterion para sa non-uniform continuity. Okay? Dahil si F ay hindi uniformly continuous, then we will be able to find or construct two sequences in the compact set K such that yung Xn minus Yn ay nagko-converge kay zero, pero yung Fxn minus F of Yn doesn't converge to zero. Okay, so ito ay yung by theorem. Ah, tama ba? Corollary 3.5. Yeah. Okay, so this is by corollary 3.5. Okay. Isa rin pala sa mga dahilan kung bakit gusto kong gamitin right away itong, uh, itong vortex. Kasi pwede naman magsimla ako sa blank PDF. Tapos meron akong notes dito sa tabi ko. Tapos isusulat ko lang pa ulit-ulit. Or i-rewrite ko yung nandun sa vortex. Alright, para... Hindi nyo kita yung buong solution kagad. Una, para madali, para hindi ko kailangang isulat lahat. Pero ang pangalawa ay para magkaroon kayo ng idea paano magbasa ng isang libro or isang mathematical book. Because all of the things that we, we are doing are actually proven before. Kaya nyo yung isearch sa internet. Kung meron kayong kopya ni Abbott, nandun na sila lahat. Okay, supplied na lahat ng proofs. Siguro yung mga exercises may sagot na rin or makakasearch kayo ng sagot sa internet. But I want you to get this uh, skill of how to read a mathematical proof. So usually kasi yung mga proof sa libro, medyo abbreviated na sila. Meaning hindi nila nilalagay lahat ng, lahat ng uh, detalye dun sa proof. So para maintindihan nyo yung daloy ng proof. Ito, lowbat na ako. Pero anyway, sana matapos natin. Okay. Para ma ma maintindihan nyo yung konsepto ng proof, kailangan lamang ay... Uh, pwedeng tingnan nyo yung ano, idagdag nyo yung mga kulang dun sa proof o yung mga detalye dun sa nakasulat na proof or make sure that we understand bakit ito yung mga kinonsider niya. Okay? So, ito palang by na to ay dapat dito pa sa okay, dun sa so. So, by corollary 3.5 we can find two sequences Xn and Yn inside a compact set such that the limit of xn minus yn is zero, but the limit of f of xn minus f of yn is not equal to zero. Okay? Tapos gagamitin ko yung definition ng pagiging compact. Compact siya kung lahat ng sequences sa loob ng set ay may convergent subsequence. All right? So by the definition of compactness, so ito ay uh, definition of compactness, May makikita tayong con, uh, sequences x sub n k na nagko-converge sa isang element ng compact set at isa pang subsequence ni y n na nagko-converge kay y. Alright? Tapos ang gusto natin ipakita ay si x ay dapat equal kay y. And then magagamit ko doon yung pagiging continuous ni f to draw a contradiction. Okay? Now we want to claim that x is equal to y. Why is that true? Because pag tiningnan natin ito, okay, alam natin na yung y sub n k minus x sub n k ay magkoconverge kay zero. Kasi si uh, x n minus y n ay nagkoconverge kay zero. Si y sub n k minus x sub n k ay subsequence lamang ng x n minus y n. So by characterization of, um, of uh, sorry, by, by a property of the limit of a sequence, dapat itong subsequence na to magko-converge din dun sa parehong limit ng parent sequence niya. Okay? So y sub nk minus x sub nk must converge to zero. Okay. And then what do we have here? Then if y is the limit of x sub nk, right? O, bakit pala ako dumaan sa subsequences pa rito? 
Bakit hindi ko na lang sinabi na xn converges to x at saka si y sub n nagko-converge kay kay y? Kasi yun naman yung parang redundant yung ginagawa ko. Bakit mula dito, hindi ko na lang sinabi na si xn ay nagko-converge kay x at saka si yn nagko-converge kay 0? Bakit kinailangan ko pang dumaan sa subsequences? Okay, pause for 30 seconds and think a little bit. Bakit ganon? And then raise your hand if uh, something came up. Okay. Kailangan kong dumaan sa subsequences because there is no guarantee that Xn on itself converges nor that Y sub n converges on its own. Ang usapan dun sa corollary 3.5, dapat ang nagko-converge yung Xn minus Yn. Dapat nagko-converge siya kay zero. Pag meron tayong difference na convergent, hindi tayo sure kung parehas ng mga nasa loob ay convergent. Alam natin, convergent minus convergent ay convergent. Or kapag ka may limit yung Xn, may limit yung Yn, yung Xn minus Yn magkakalimit din. Kaya lang, pag alam natin yung Xn minus Yn ay may limit, hindi tayo sure kung yung Xn at saka Yn ay may kanya-kanyang limits. Alright? So I need to be careful about that. There's no guarantee that these two sequences are convergent on their own rights. So ibig sabihin, kailangan ko talagang dumaan dun sa convergent subsequence which is guaranteed by K being compact. Yun yung contribution ng assumption na si K ay compact. Kaya pala dapat compact set yung nasa theorem 3.9. Okay? Now, if that is the okay, case, sure na ako na nagko-converge kay X at nagko-converge kay Y, yung X sub N K at saka yung Y sub N K. Then I'll do it this way. I know Y is equal to the limit of Y sub N K, all right? But I can rewrite y sub n k this way. Okay? Pwede kong siyang isulat ng ganito. Pag sinimplify natin ito, equal pa rin siya kay y sub n k. But why do I need to write it cunningly in this form? Kasi alam ko yung y sub n k minus x sub n k ay nagko-converge kay 0. So this guy has limit 0. And x sub n k... I don't know what this limit is, pero siya na lang yung matitiran. Oh, I know what the limit of x sub nk is. Ang limit nga pala ni x sub nk ay si x. So ang limit, nitong difference na to, ay equals the limit ni x sub nk, which is equal to x. And then if we retrace the series of equations that we have, ultimately, we have y is equal to x, as we have claimed. Now, dito na papasok yung continuity requirement or yung continuity assumption. Si f ay continuous kay x kasi si x ay element ng compact set. E si f inassume natin na continuous dun sa compact set. So that means, dahil continuous si f, yung sequence of function values ay nagko-converge kay f of x. Uh, remember the sequential uh, characterization for limits, all right? So kahit anong sequence na nagko-converge kay x, dapat yung sequence of function values nagko-converge din kay f. And the same thing goes for the sequence of function values of y sub n k's. Dapat nagko-converge din siya kay k. Okay. So in summary, what we have found here is that a sequence f of x sub n k minus f of y sub n k, so nakakuha tayo ng dalawang sequences, um, actually, kanina ko pa pala nabigay yung dalawang sequences. Sequence x sub nk at saka sequence y sub nk na yung difference ay nagko-converge kay 0. Okay? And yet, yung function value ni x sub nk minus function value ni y sub nk ay nagko-converge din kay 0. And this is contradictory to our supposition earlier that the limit is not equal to 0. Okay? Actually, mali itong conclusion. Dapat yung conclusion ay it contradicts the fact that uh, yung limit ng f of x sub n k minus uh, f of y sub n k as 
nk approaches zero, dapat mag-equal ka. Uh, sorry, as uh, what? And sa ben, k approaches positive infinity, ay hindi dapat equal kay zero. Yun yung inassume natin dito kanina. Okay? And so this completes the proof kung bakit ang isang function na continuous sa isang compact set ay uniformly continuous na rin sa compact set na yun. Okay? Now, as a quick example, we have uh, example 10. Sabi rito, balikan natin si, si x squared. Si x squared ay hindi uniform sa so zero to positive infinity. We have seen it before. Uh, we have seen it before. Na kasi yung choice para dun sa delta ay nakadepende dun sa x sub zero. Napipiliin natin. So by the definition of uh, of uh, of uh, uniform continuity, hindi talaga siya papasok. But if you want to argue using uh, corollary 3.5 Pwede mo i-consider ito, si n plus, uh, n plus 1 over n. Tapos uh, yung isang sequence ay si n. All right? Pag kinuha mo yung xn minus yn, equal yan sa n plus 1 over n minus n, equal yan sa 1 over n, this converges to 0. Okay? Kaya lang, pag kinuha mo yung f of x sub n minus f of y sub n, Okay. Ang ang gusto natin hindi to dapat mag-converge kay zero para makapasok tayo sa corollary 3.5. If you do this, we'll have n plus 1 over n squared minus n squared. Mga function values sila. Pag sinimplify natin yan, magkakaroon tayo ng n squared plus 1 plus 2 plus 1 over n squared minus n squared. Aha, tama ba yung algebra ko? n squared plus 1 times 2. Okay, I think so. And this simplifies to 2 plus 1 over n squared, which converges to 2. Nakabuo tayo ng dalawang sequences, xn and yn, such that xn minus yn converges to 0. Okay? But the sequence of differences of function values doesn't converge to 0. Instead, it converges to 2. So by the um, by corollary 3.5, uh, x squared is not uniformly continuous on the open interval zero to positive infinity. Tapos ito yung magandang example na kapag ka yung limit ng difference ay equal kay zero, hindi ibig sabihin convergent yung bawat term dun sa difference. Yung una, n plus 1 over n, uh, hindi siya convergent, tama? Kasi magiging... Uh, this will approach what? This will approach positive infinity. This guy will also approach positive infinity. So on their own, hindi convergent yung xn at saka yn. But if we take their difference, it can converge to zero. Okay, kaya kailangan maging careful kayo sa, sa mga technical nitty-gritties like that. Okay? So yeah, by that, uh, by that uh, fact, we can conclude that x squared is not uniformly continuous on the open interval zero to positive infinity. But if you want to uh, to say that uh, x squared is uniformly continuous somewhere, then you can just restrict the domain to a compact set. Remember, we have a characterization of compact sets. I think we uh, we use that as our high Borel theorem. Nakapagka close and bounded, automatically shy compact. So I consider mo yung closed uh, interval negative 10 to 10. It is obviously closed because it's a closed interval. It is bounded. It is bounded by, uh, or the absolute value of members of this interval is bounded above by 10. All right. So dial closed and bounded ito by Heine Borel, siya ay compact. And by theorem 3.9, kapag ka ang isang function ay continuous sa isang compact set, uniformly continuous siya sa compact set na yon. And actually, you can use that as the proof na compact set si, uh, si x squared dito sa compact set na to. All right. Or if you want to be uh, more technical about it, uh, nandito yung proof by definition na siya ay uh, indeed uniformly continuous. Kasi pag pumili ka ng kahit anong element ni negative 10 to 10, okay, yung delta na 
pipiliin mo para dun sa epsilon challenge ay pwede mong i-take to be anything smaller than epsilon over 20. And epsilon over 20 being the choice for delta doesn't depend on the element of the domain. So ibig sabihin, by definition talaga, uh, uniformly continuous si x squared sa close interval negative 10 to 10. And you can also, uh, uh, yeah, and the alternative is easier, appeal to theorem 3.9. Okay, uh, kung saan naman guys, info overload na ba? Or pwede ko pa na bang tapusin itong uh, lecture notes? Tapusin na natin, okay lang ba? Dalawang theorems na lang to. And this is, two guys are very familiar to us. Okay, dahil wala nag object itutuloy ko na. Okay, intermediate value theorem. Medyo weird lang no, kasi nauna yung extreme value theorem kesa sa... Uh, intermediate value theorem. Sa MAT36, nauuna yung intermediate value theorem. Kasi sa IVT, ang kailangan lamang natin ay continuity. Sa statement kasi ng um, extreme value theorem sa MAT36, uh, dapat si F ay differentiable on, uh, on an interval. Okay? Pero napansin nyo, yung EVT natin dito ay hindi nagre-require na siya ay differentiable. There's no mention of the derivative. Lagila ang meron lamang ay siya dapat ay continuous sa isang compact set. Okay? So, ngayon punta natin yung intermediate value theorem. And as a lemma to the intermediate value theorem, we have theorem 10. Kailangan ko itong uh, result na to para mas madali yung proof ng IVT. And this theorem is usually referred to as the location of root theorem. Okay? Nagsasabi lang siya kung saan may nag exist na root. So if you have a function f defined in a closed interval a, b to the set of real numbers, then if a, uh, if f of a and f of b are of opposite signs, right? Yung kasi yung product nila ay negative, so magkaiba sila ng sign, yung isa ay positive, yung iba ay negative, then there exists a root x sub 0 on the open interval a, b, Yan na pala, period. <laughs> Nabitin ako. Kasi nirephrase ko na nga pala siya. So may mahanap akong root sa open interval A, B. Or in other words, there will exist an element, x sub 0, of the open interval A, B, at which the function value is equal to 0. Uh, madali naman siyang i-imagine. Okay? Mas madali siyang imagine graphically. Halimbawa to si A, at to si B, Tapos yung product ng function values dapat ay negative. So ibig sabihin, yung function value dapat ni A at saka ni B ay magkaiba ng sign. Pagpalagay natin yung f of A ay negative, tapos yung f of B ay positive. Tapos si f daw ay continuous. So I should be able to draw the graph of f on the closed interval A, B without lifting my pen. So the drawing ko siya ng hindi umangat si, si pen. And then, Sabi niya, it is guaranteed na merong isang root o may isang element ng open interval na nagpapa zero kay uh, kf. And actually, that's this. Ito yung x sub zero. And it's kind of obvious, right? Kasi para makapunta ka from a negative sign to a positive sign, dahil continuous yung function, sure tayo na dadaan siya sa x-axis and vice versa. Okay? Now, how do we prove this? Now, the proof is here. Let's just analyze the proof. So, let's consider the interval A, B. Tapos, hahatiin ko daw yung interval A, B sa dalawang subintervals. So, and usually, I will divide it into the midpoint. So, ito si A, ito si B. Hatiin ko siya sa gitna. A plus B over 2. And then, I will select kung nasaan dito yung root. So, titingnan ko lang si... Mm -hmm, Diba si f of a dapat ay, at saka si f of b dapat magkaiba ng, magkaiba ng sign. Alright? Tapos kung i-drawing ko yung function, okay? Halimbawa, yan yung itsura ng function. So ang i1 ko dito ay si close interval a, b. Tapos si i2, pipiliin ko siya to be the interval that contains the roots. Or that contains the root. So ibig sabihin, i-consider ko to. So, ito, si, uh, ito yung pangatlong point. 
pipiliin ko ngayon kung kailan magkaiba yung sign nung endpoints nung bagong subinterval. Tingnan yung second subinterval. Positive yung function value nito, positive rin yung function value nito. Hindi tayo sure kung may root. Pero dahil ito ay f of a, tapos ito ay f of b, sure tayo na dadaan siya dito sa x-axis. So itong, guy na, itong bagong interval na to, siya yung gagawin kong i2. And i2 will have half the length ni i1. Tapos, ulitin ko tong proseso. Okay, so yung process ay hatiin ko di siya sa dalawa. Hatiin ko siya dun sa pagitan ni a at saka ni a plus b over 2. Okay? So kukunin ko na naman yung midpoint. Tapos pipiliin ko na naman dito sino sa dalawang interval. Is it the left interval or the right interval that will contain the root that we are looking for? And the criterion that we will be looking for is kela, sino yung magkaiba ng sign. Si f of a at saka yung f of the midpoint are both negative. Then I will select as I3 yung kana na interval. Kasi sa interval na to, negative yung function value ng midpoint, positive yung function value ng right endpoint, so magkaiba sila ng sign. And then I will continue this process until I get a sequence of intervals I submit. Okay? Tapos, ah, gumagawa si sir ng mga intervals. Tapos yung mga intervals ay nested. Si I1, laman niya si I2. Pero laman ni I2 si I3. Tapos si I3, laman niya si I4 because I4 will be somewhere here. And so on. So, ibig sabihin, paliit ng paliit yung mga intervals na consider ko. And those subsequent intervals belong or is properly contained in the earlier intervals, creating a nested sequence of intervals. Okay? Kala nyo makakatakas na tayo sa NIP. So, ganun yung proseso rito. Makakabuo ako ng nested intervals. Each of the intervals will have length one half of the previous interval. And I think in the proof of the nested interval property or one example therein, we have proven that, oops, we have proven that the I sub n's will have lengths that will converge to zero. Okay? Kasi paliit ng paliit yung mga intervals. Kasi lagi natin silang hinahate sa kalahate ng kalahate ng kalahate. So eventually, if you do this infinitely many number of times, then the length of all the subintervals will approach zero. Okay? So yun yung kwento dun sa pagbuo natin ng nested intervals. And then if we are lucky and we hit the jackpot that one of the... Uh, one of the endpoints. So, halimbawa, yung mga intervals, tawagin natin AN, kama BN. Pagka yung F of AN, o kaya yung F of BN, ay naging zero sa isang N, then tapos na yung boxing. Napakita natin na meron siyang root. Right? Pero kunwari, worst case, kunwari wala dun sa mga endpoints yung nagpa-zero doon sa function F. Right? Then we will appeal to the nested interval property. Okay? So kung laging non-zero yung f of a n saka yung f of b n, then dapat laging mas malaki yung f of b n. Alright? Uh, again, bakit ito nangyari? Kasi meron yata ako rito yung assumption na totoo ito. So babalik ta rin ko lang naman yung babalik ta rin ko lang naman yung arguments kapag uh, meron tayong f of b uh, less than zero, less than f of a. Pagka ang negative naman ay si f of b. All right. Pero it, it, it doesn't change the thing. We can consider the same process. Kaya ang tawag sa kanya W log. Without loss of generality, we can use this assumption. Otherwise, we'll just flip the inequalities here. Okay. So if that is true, then we are sure that this guys, this uh, function values are strictly less than or strictly greater than zero. Okay. Pero ang sabi ng nested interval property, when we have nested intervals, whose lengths are converging to zero, then the intersection of the i sub n's is a singleton. Okay? So, ang intersection niya, isa lang yung laman, tawagin natin siyang x sub zero. And x sub zero will be the limit of the left endpoints and also the right endpoint. So, that should have been a b sub m no mga subintervals. And again, nakita na natin to sa NIP. 
So ito yung meron tayo. So ibig sabihin, pag SEF continuous, di ba? Si F ay continuous. So ibig sabihin ng F of X sub 0, nasa domain kasi siya, nasa interval AB siya, ay equal sa limit ng F of A sub N. Tapos si F of X sub 0 equal din dun sa limit ng B sub N. Kasi yun yung uh, consequence ng pagiging continuous. Kahit anong sequence na nagko uh, ang ilagay mo doon sa loob ng, ng function, magko-converge siya doon sa function value nung limit. Okay? Yun yung sinabi neto. Right? Now, what do we have here? Well, we have these two guys being equal to each other. And we know that f of a n is less than zero, is less than f of b n. Then, pag, tiningnan nat pag ginamit natin yung order limit theorem, balikan natin yung order limit theorem. So, kapag ka ang f of a n ay less than zero, yung limit niya dapat ay less than or equal to zero. So, by the limit theorem, this guy will imply this guy. Okay? Kasi ang limit ni f of a n ay f of x sub zero. E si f of a n lagi silang negative. So, dapat yung limit nila ay less than or equal to zero. Then I'll use the same argument, this time using the fact that f of bn is always positive. So, the limit of f of bns, which happen to be f of x sub zero, must always be greater than or equal to zero. And here we have f of x sub zero being both less than or equal to zero and greater than or equal to zero. Therefore, f of x sub zero must be equal to zero. And what we have constructed here is a root of um, is a root of the function f. So yung root na inaanap natin dun sa interval a, b ay walang iba kundi si x sub 0. Siya yung intersection ng mga nested intervals. Okay? Now for the applied math peeps there and dun sa mga advices ko na nag -nunu map or uh, yung mga nag-174 at plano mag-175 next semester, right? Makita niyo ulit yung process na to kasi ito yung basic root of finding a uh, method which is called the bisection method. Kung naghahanap kayo ng roots ng isang komplikadong function pero yung function na yun ay continuous and you can define a bracket kung saan ay isang closed interval kung saan magkaiba yung sign nung, nung function value sa magkabilang dulo, lagi kang may mahanap na roots sa pagitan nila. So ito yung location of root theorem. And the proof of this theorem gave uh, numerical analysts some idea on how to find the solution. Yun yung paulit-ulit na paghati-hati ng mga intervals okay, na nagsasatisfy na dapat yung endpoints nila laging magkaiba yung sign ng function values. At sure tayo by this proof na magko-converge yung method okay, dun sa root ni x sub 0. Uh, dun sa root ni f, which is x sub 0. So kaya huwag niyo itong kalimutan example na to puntahan natin to sa 175. Okay? Now, finally, uh, let me borrow uh, five more minutes, hopefully, ma-prove natin yung intermediate value theorem, which you already know from, uh, from math 36. Walang pinagbago. Meron kang isang function defined on the uh, closed interval AB. And then you have, uh, say, you have... Um, a continuous function on this closed interval, then the intermediate value theorem tells us that sa kahit anong number, k, tawagin natin k, sa pagitan ni f of a at ni f of b, so ito si f of a, kasi ito si f of b, oops, come on, nangyari. Sorry guys, hindi ko alam kung ba't nag-act up ngayon itong, yeah. Ito si f of b, alright? So sa kahit anong number, sa pagitan ni f of a at ni f of b, so sa region na to, halimbawa ito, ito yung tawagin kong k. Sa kahit anong k, sa pagitan ni f of a at ni f of b, lagi akong may mahanap na element nung, nung closed interval, tawagin natin siyang c, or tawagin natin x sub 0, Okay? Nang function value ni x sub 0 ay equal kay k. And we can do this for any k 
between f of a and f of b. Kaya ang tawag sa kanya ay intermediate value. Sa kahit anong number in the intermediate between f of a and f of b, there is an element of the given closed interval which will give us the value k after evaluating it under f. Okay? So paano natin ito ipoprove? Well, simply na lang yung proof niya. Gagamitin natin yung location of root theorem. Okay? Now, the idea here is what? So I will define g of x to be the function um, f of x minus uh, f of x minus k. Uh, sufficient na nga ba to? Uh, hold on. Parang may nakalimutan na kung step. Aha. Uh -huh. location of roots ako. Kailangan ko dapat yung f of a at saka f of b ay magkaiba ng sign. Mm -hmm. Okay. Aha. Uh -huh. uh, siguro bago ko to i-define, magpasok lang ako ng isang assumption but that assumption will not lose the generality of the result. So for the proof, without loss of generality, I will assume that f of a is smaller than k is smaller than f of b. Okay. Actually, lagyan natin ng less than or equal to rito. Okay. So kasi nga, ang requirement dapat si k nasa pagitan ni f of a at saka ni f of b. So without loss of generality, I will assume that f of a is less than or equal to f of b. So therefore, k is in between them. Kung, uh, kung ang f of b yung mas maliit kesa kay f of a, then you'll just flip the, uh, the roles of f of a and f of b. The argument will still be the same. Okay? So isa lang yung papakita kong case. And then here, after this, uh, huh. okay. so if uh, f of a or f of b is equal to k, then we're done. Okay, so tapos na tayo kung ang f of a ay si k o ang f of b ay si k. Uh, ano yung mangyayari kung hindi? So suppose, so if, if not, then we are sure that f of a is less, is strictly less than k, is strictly less than f of b. Okay? So kasi nga, wala sa kanila ang nagpabingo ng f of uh, a or f of b ay equal kay k. So kailangan natin maghanap ng x sub 0 dito. Right? So now we will define this function, yung inispoil ko kanina. Si g of x ay i-define ko to be f of x minus k. Right? Then what can we say about g of a? g of a will be f of a minus k. But remember that k is larger than f of a. So this guy will be negative. All right. And on the other hand, g of b will be f of b minus k is positive because k is strictly smaller than f of b. So therefore, and g of a times g of b is less than zero. All right. Moreover, I can note that g being the sum of two continuous functions, f of x was assumed to be continuous on the closed interval a, b. k is a constant function, so it's continuous everywhere. The difference of two continuous functions is again continuous. So g will be continuous on the interval a, b. So g is continuous on the interval a, b. g of a and g, uh, and g of b have opposite signs. So therefore, by theorem... Uh, by the previous theorem, the uh, location of root theorem, okay, there exists an x sub zero in the intermediate between a and b such that uh, g of x sub zero is equal to zero. Okay, so you, ito yung sinabi ng location of root theorem, but this is equivalent to saying that f of x sub zero minus k is equal to zero, right? Kasi ito yung definition ng g of x sub zero f of x sub 0 
minus k. And a little tweaking will tell us that f of x sub 0 is our desired element of the domain. Remember, x sub 0 belongs to the open interval AB. And here we have shown that f of x is equal to k. So si x sub 0, yung hinahanap natin na element ng open interval, kasi nga sa case na to, inassume natin ng f of a at f of b ay parehas, hindi equal kay, uh, equal kay k. So x sub 0 definitely is in the interior of the open interval a, b. And that is the desired value that we're looking for. Okay? And double check, yes. Uh, bibliography na. Okay? And that's it. Finally, tapos na natin yung limits and continuity. And I think we are ready for the problem set on the 24th. Okay? Ha! Guys, do you have any questions? Medyo minarato natin to ng konti. Di pala konti. Minarato talaga natin. Okay, I hope you got something from today. Kahit tahimi kayo. Or um, hopefully hindi kayo nabilisan or naiwan. So if you have some clarificatory questions, just feel free to hit me up with an email or a chat. Uh, or a chat. I'll be more than happy to answer your questions. And uh, yeah, in preparation for uh, the uh, the problem set. Okay. Oh, by the way, nangako nga pala ako na may bonus dun sa mga mag uh, papasa ng reaction paper. Probably uh, later tonight, I will uh, open up a uh, submission bin in Canvas about the reaction paper on the uh, applied on the AMAT 199 seminar. So if you guys attended that seminar, uh, sulit lang kayo ng couple of paragraphs or kung masyado kayong nasayahan, even a couple of pages. Uh, walang format naman. Tapos uh, i-upload nyo lang siya sa Canvas later. So I'll give you some points for the third problem set. Third problem set na nga pala ito. Okay? So do, I'll do that later tonight. I'll just have some. Uh, I'll just have to to run some errands after the class. But yeah, pwede niyo siyang gawin. Uh, any questions? Three percent na lang yung tablet ko. Uh, all right. Any other questions or concerns? So if not, then I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the night. Good luck sa problem set next week, and let's see each other again on Tuesday. Bye everyone. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right.